The Hand and Heart Foundation was set up by Jamie Regan in 2010. Its aim is to integrate disabled and able-bodied people in the workplace by way of an inclusion bar. It's an innovative idea bringing people together and raising awareness. In the bar we have a team really that I suppose spans up to 10 people. My name is Sean Tobin and I am the IT support for Jamie's company. Hi, my name is Connie Richardson and I help out with setting the tables in the access windows of play or any of the events that are coming on. Hi, my name is Caroline McGrathy and I work as a PA to the CEO in Hand on Heart. <laughs> The idea behind Hand on Heart is it's an, a disability organisation that focuses on creating employment. And really one of the most critical issues we've looked at is designing work environments around people with disabilities. Let's bring these people together and design the bar that fits around them. So one of the major design features of our bar is the fact that it has a split level so that a person in a wheelchair can work, pour a pint, uh, you know, get drinks from the fridge. And I suppose that's been the most uh, interesting thing because from what we've seen there doesn't appear to have ever been that anywhere in the world. Uh, we would have on any given night five people working behind the bar and then we would sort of have, I, I'd class sort of another four to five people as our support aspect. It's, it's a case of many hands, you know, make light work. But what I've found over, over the first few events that we've done is that that's the exciting part about this, that really our bar starts from the time we put it in the van. Even I think we've all found that actually serving the drinks is, is one small part of working in a bar. There is a lot that goes on in terms of making sure the drinks are cold, you know, filling the ice buckets, washing the dishes, as I say for us, setting it up and packing it up. And I suppose afterwards just sitting down and having a drink and talking about how it went. It's a lot of them, yeah. Yeah. yeah, people bought quips being they're not into their quips. So maybe that's where you say the bacon bright. But see, I wonder if that's part to do with the signage on the bar. I mean, we've got plenty of room. So if we almost stapled, you know, wait, one pack of crisps, one bacon fries, one whatever, and said all oh, snacks, one euro. I first heard about Hand on Heart um, is when I was looking at an uh, email. I get an email every week from the deaf organisation and one of the email was about a job opportunity. So I had a look at it and it, was, um, it matched all like my skills and everything. So I decided to just apply to it. The inclusion bar is really important for people with disabilities because it shows them they're actually breaking a barrier that was there because most of the time when people with disabilities work in bar, like a lot of my friends who are deaf, they work in bars, but they're always like working in the cellar or you know working in the background collecting glasses. They're never actually you know serving anyone. So this inclusion bar is a, is like a brilliant breakthrough because it means that people are actually serving drinks to the public. When you have someone that has a disability, there'll always be a big barrier in front of you. Right? The barrier will go down in time. It's just you have to give the person time to get used to you. They might get used to you straight away, but give the person time to, to get to know you. Because there's just people out there me included that would have thought at one stage that I wouldn't have been able to do anything, that I wouldn't have been where I am now. No matter so what type of disability they have can work on. They don't even have to have a disability as such. But he's trying to focus on people with disabilities because it has been a perspective that people just find that people with disabilities can't do anything, but that's wrong. And he has changed people's perspective in life that they actually can and people are looking at it and seeing it. Yeah, when I heard the idea that there's going to be a proper bar for people with disabilities that to be able to go in and integrate with people who are able-bodied as well. Like we want other people to get to know us, not to be afraid to talk to us, not to be afraid to have a laugh, maybe to ask questions. Where we use the access centre, they have their own bar but 
they have an area which we come in, we set the bar up, we set the tops up. And it's all part of everyday life for people that work in bars. And it's a good opportunity for everyone. Yeah, there, was, uh, there was a guy the other night who was watching uh, Ken stacking you know, cans of minerals, you know, crates onto Connie's lap. And I saw him look because he just was a bit like, wow. You know, it's not just a, a person in a wheelchair that obviously can't do much because of physical things. There you go. She's got two crates of coke and she's going out to the van. So, you know, things like that. And it's just simple yeah. stuff, but it's great an event in the access center on saturday gone and there was a lot of people that were shocked to see us that what we were able to do and they've asked us like can we come in to people's premises and actually set the bar up and do the bar and we said yes so that might be something that might come up hopefully in the next couple of months maybe weeks <laughs> The process of actually breaking down the bar, setting it up, is, is quite lengthy. Technically, in terms of putting the bar together, we've got to the stage now that our second bar is a metal-based bar and we're even using, say, plastic uh, as the, the out, outer surrounds so that we're trying to make it much more simple. I often wonder how many bars, you know, in, say, three years' time, we might be up to version six. But if we keep improving it and making it so that everyone can get involved, I think that will always be much better. From what we find is that is where we're really promoting inclusion. It's great that we're creating jobs. It's great that when people are at the bar, they, they feel a part of a very inclusive environment. In terms of our expansion plan, I suppose, where we hope we go from now is taking this bar from just an events-based bar to maybe happening maybe more regularly on a, on, a, on a weekend basis. I see the power of actually doing joint fundraisers with organisations because as I used to find when I worked for a disability organisation, we might organise a quiz night and we would bring say 100 people into the pub. Now we might raise 1500 euro but I always used to think how much money has been taken across the bar. So what we can do is turn around to say local clubs, there's Ballymun United for example around the road, if we did an event with them and we could split the proceeds they are going to gener generate income and so are we. So it's probably a case of saying you've got the people, we've got the bar. I enjoy working in Hand on Heart because um, it involved a lot of different disabilities. Before I was just working with the deaf community a lot. But now I'm learning more about blind people, I'm learning more about wheelchair users, more about cerebral palsy and all these different disabilities that I never knew about before. So this organisation has like opened my eyes to all different disabilities and now like I'm grateful to Hand on Heart for giving me the opportunity to learn about all these different disabilities. I came in contact with Connie, I suppose, through Sean. Uh, Sean sort of uh, again came through another contact and I suppose one thing we soon realised is the, the disability community is, is actually, everybody knows everybody. It, it's quite interesting uh, and that's probably because people have been on courses with each other and, and maybe have done work experience or access disability agencies. It, it's great what Connie brings to the bar, I think, because people watch how confident she is and I think people have a lot of respect for, for Connie and, and actually in some ways people often say, oh, you know, they look at people and think, well, that person doesn't look like they have a disability. You almost need someone like Connie who can show uh, how she moves around. She's very confident. So this is actually where we uh, set up the bar. As I say, it's, it's the access centre that's normally set up uh, as sort of, I suppose, as a cafe for people coming in and out. We move the tables, we set up, and then we go, and hopefully we're, it's as if we were never here. Our next stage is, is to be able to offer accredited bar training courses. So we hope to have our bar course uh, validated by May this year. So we could be looking, say, in September to be offering bar courses and that will mean that probably the, you know, from around June the following year, we will then be able to offer sort of a ceremony and people will be receiving their certificates. At the moment, the Inclusion Bar has a staff of 10 people. Jamie hopes to expand on this by working corporate functions and moving into catering. The idea is to break down existing barriers and bring people together in the working environment. It offers inclusion and opportunity for all, and the door is always open.